Welcome everyone to my channel Everything PS. With you MD. In a new tutorial in our Premiere Pro course. Do you want to know how to adjust the volume over time in Adobe Premiere Pro? Then you are in the right place to be. Let's start our tutorial. For this tutorial, I am using the Premiere Pro project file. 0802. Adjust volume over time. You'll find that project file with the media associated with this tutorial. You can download it from the link down below in the description box. Just double click on it to open it in Premiere Pro. It's likely you'll want to change the volume of music when there is voiceover or important events taking place on the screen. To achieve this you'll use a special kind of mark called a keyframe, which stores the volume you want at a particular time. And let's try it with this sequence. On the timeline, I'm gonna move the divide between the video and audio tracks, so we can see this music clip a little more clearly. In fact, I think I'll make the track a little taller as well, so we can see the waveform. Keyframes are added to this white line the volume level for the clip, and if you can't see that white line, which is sometimes called a rubber band, click on the settings menu for the timeline, and make sure show audio keyframes is enabled. Right now I can see there's already been an audio adjustment. This white line is below the halfway mark on the clip, so overall it's a little quieter. I'm going to zoom in a little so I can see the clip more clearly, using the navigator at the bottom of the timeline panel. And I'm gonna switch to the pen tool. With the pen tool selected, I'm gonna add a couple of keyframes, at the beginning and end, of each of those voiceover clips. I want the music to get quieter during the voiceover. I'll just do the first two here, so you can see how this looks. Now I can click on any of these keyframe marks and adjust the volume, or if I hold down the control key on Windows or command key on Mac OS, I can click on the line between two keyframes and drag it down to make a flat level adjustment. A keyframe is a mark on a frame it's not the frame itself, even though the name is keyframe. The word is taken from the word of animation, where animators would specify the details of specific frames and allow assistant animators to fill in the gaps. And that filling in the gaps is important. You can see here on the timeline the rubber band depth over time, and then flat for a while, and then it raises over time. That adjustment over time is called interpolation and it happens automatically when you add keyframes in Premiere Pro. It's also worth noting that keyframes are on the clip, not on the timeline. So if I go back to the selection tool, and move this clip along the timeline, you can see those keyframes move with it. I will just undo that, with Ctrl-Z on Windows, or Command-Z on Mac OS. Another way to add keyframes in Premiere Pro is to use the audio clip mixer. I'm going to set the playhead a little bit further back on the timeline and go to the audio clip mixer. And as I'm working on my audio 4 track, I'm going to turn on this option on the audio clip mixer, write keyframes for that audio 4 track. Now will I play back the timeline. If I make adjustments using this fader control, keyframes will be added automatically. And let's take a look at that. I'm going to use the spacebar to start and stop playback. This is my story of returning home. To the land of the eternal spring. you can see it right away. Lots of keyframes have been added using this method. 
I'll zoom in a little more using the navigator. So we can see them more clearly. The selection tool will allow you to select and move keyframes. But if you want to select and move multiple keyframes, go back to the pen tool. And now you can lasso to select them and move them all together. Remember the higher keyframe is, the louder the volume will be. If you want to delete keyframes, make sure they selected and press the delete key. Remember when you finish working with a tool like the pen tool, be sure to go back to the selection tool after it, so everything functions as you expect. Once you must a keyframing, that's adding locks with specific settings on them. You'll discover that you can apply the same technique in lots of ways, including when working with visual effects. It's a powerful but simple way to take your creative work to the next level. Here we go, we are done for today. Don't forget to sub, like, share, and leave your comment down below. See you next time, goodbye.